Today we are introducing new capabilities to provide more prescriptive control over how file systems are secured, managed, and consumed. We launch NFS export options to enable you to set permissions on your file systems to limit root user access, require a connection from a privileged port, or completely deny access to some clients based on either a single IP address or a group of IP addresses. This feature enables you to host multi-tenant environment by providing you a finer-grained security control so that each client's file system can have different permissions. For example, if you want to allow clients to consume but not update resources in your file system, you can set their access to read only. Moreover, you can prevent a client from having root access to your file systems. When you create a file system and associated mount target, the export option for that file system are set to these defaults, which allow full access to all NFS client source connections. These defaults should be changed to restrict the access, even though mount targets in file storage are not accessible from the internet. By default, your file system is only visible to all the hosts that are in the mount targets VCN or peer to that VCN. VCN security rules apply another layer of restriction as well. But using NFS export options, you can set additional limits on clients' ability to connect to your file system to view or write data based on clients' IP addresses. Managing which clients have access to your file system is straightforward. For each file system, simply set the source parameter to define which client should access which file system. And clients that are not listed will not have the visibility to your file systems. Let's do a couple of examples here to demonstrate how these export options work over the CLI. Let's say we have three clients that are sharing one mount target, but each have their own file system. In this scenario, we want to set them up so that they can't access each other's data. Client A is assigned to CIDR block 10.0.0.24 and should have read and write access to file system A, but not file system B. Client B is assigned to CIDR block 10.1.0.0.24 one zero slash 24 and should have read and write access to file system B but not file system A. Client C is assigned to CIDR block 10 slash 24 and should not have access to either file systems. Both file system A and file system B are associated to a single mount target called MT1 and each file system has an export contained in the export setup MT1. Since client A and client B access the mount target from different CIDR blocks, you can set the client options for both file system exports to only allow access to a single CIDR block. Set file system A to allow read write access only to client A, who is assigned to CIDR block 10.0.0.24. Since neither client B nor client C is in included in this CIDR block, they cannot access file system A. Next, we need to set file system B to allow read-write access only to client B, who is assigned to CIDR block 10.1.1.0.24. Since neither client A nor client C is included in this CIDR block, they cannot access file system B. Because we did not include client C's CIDR block in any of these export options, neither file system A nor file system B will be visible to client C. Now let's say in a different scenario, in order to increase security, you want to limit root user's privileges when connecting to file system D. How can we achieve that? Use identity squash to remap root users to UID and GID 65534. In Unix-like systems, 
This combination is reserved for nobody, which is a user with no system privileges. Here I have demonstrated just two scenarios over the CLI. For more scenarios and how to achieve the same control over the SDK and Terraform, visit the resources below.